So we're going to go over some basic blending and layering techniques with alcohol markers. Um, as you can tell, each of your grayscales is like a percentage, so part of that is a solid color. Theoretically, if you layered them all enough times, they would all add up to the same color. Um, so the first thing we're going to look at, I've got my chisel tip, I've got medium color, is just flooding one whole circle solid with one color. And you can see that if I just sort of go over it, it's kind of streaky. So maybe then I'll try the same marker, but going at a couple different directions, you can see there's still some streakiness. So one trick is to use a lighter color, a lower percentage, and letting the alcohol and that sort of reactivate and flood the fibers of the paper um, to help it all sort of even out, move around, become a nice, even flat field of color. So that's our first little bit of practicing, is to find out how to really achieve those flat areas, those smoothed kind of, um, transfers. So now that we've sort of got that leveled out, there's a couple areas I'm still fiddling with there. Um, so that was just with one color, medium color, and then the lightest of that gray scale that I had to go over it. Now we're gonna look at blending using about six colors. So I'm gonna lay down the lightest color first and then slowly build out from there. Right now I'm only laying in maybe three different colors. I've got kind of a medium, I've got my lightest there with a, a number two around it, and now I'm laying in about a four or five. And now I'm starting to add more and more layers of dark ones. It's okay if it's choppy right now, because we're going to kind of even that out in a bit. But I'm using, as you can see, some directional strokes, similar to how we work in colored pencil, to start sculpting the, the sphere into a sphere shape. You can see as more and more marker ends up on the paper, they sort of start melting into each other better. So overworking is something that kind of helps in this and keeping your page wet. For as long as the ink is wet on the paper, it really, really will blend well. As soon as it dries and you go away and come back, it, it, the layers sink together a little less well. So that's using all these different colors, always taking the lightest color and kind of using that to go over the area before it. So you start with the lightest, you go to the dark, you make a mid-tone, and then you slowly go backwards from dark to light, allowing the light to be overlapping, feathering over the dark areas, because the light ink will always reactivate the layers underneath it, has a high concentration of alcohol. So here I'm doing this with only three colors and a little bit more of a feathering action. Um, harder with a chisel tip, easier with a brush point. But you can see that I'm sort of using more of the drawing techniques, like if you were hashing it, to create kind of motion and movement in, in a transfer with just pressure and only three colors. You can see more of the line work, but it does work and is totally a way to sculpt and give some dimension to your shapes. So when feathering, you're working on pressure as well as density of lines. So now we're gonna sort of take a couple of these things and play with these arrows and ribbons, which is what your assignment is based around, right? So the reason I chose this is because they have all these curves. They've got a great opportunity for you to put dimension into things. You can sculpt them into any shape you want. You can make them twirl around different shapes. So it gives you an opportunity to create a composition, but also to practice shading and creating different textures and maybe using different techniques to get different effects when they're all leveled up. I think the temptation with marker is to make everything sort of the same texture. So this is a time to practice creating different textures. So in this one, one of the ways you can do that, I've selected only four markers um, a medium, a darker, and a very my lightest. And so by keeping myself to that color palette, I know that this specific arrow is going to turn out a specific way. It's going, like, if I then chose four different markers, you know, closer to the dark spectrum or closer to the light spectrum later, that would feel a little different. That would be one way to help make sure I'm differentiating my textures. So as you can see, once again, I'm doing kind of light all over, then doing the darkest, then the mid-tone, and then using the light to blend all the layers underneath it together. I did use some feathering and directional line work to help shape that arrow a lot, um, and kind of guesstimating and really exaggerating light sources. So with the ribbon, we're gonna do a couple different techniques. So first off, I'm using a couple more colors than I used on the arrow, four or five it looks like. I've swatched them out there at the bottom. Um, so you can see that I'm kind of keeping it to one, two, three, four, five. So I have one of my very darkest colors, I have a mid-tone, and then I have my fourth darkest, my second darkest, and my lightest. Um, 
versus with the arrow I used only three tones and sort of overlap them with the more fluid and greater amount of space. I want to use a little bit more of a, a softer blending technique. More markers equals a cleaner blending. That's why it's nice to have a lot of markers to build a lot of percentages. <laughs> Um, but they can get expensive, which is why we're focusing on just a grayscale and having a certain number of percentages of that. So the technique is the same, right? So cover most of my area in my lightest color marker, like that. I like to lay in my darkest shadows first. You can see from where the light is how quickly these are drying because of the alcohol, but if I can kind of work with them while they're still saturated in the paper, they're going to blend out a lot smoother. So I work in little areas. So do the little section you're doing as quickly as possible and then move on to the next one. This is not a time to try to like lay your shadows in over the whole piece. So you can see I'm laying down kind of a mid-tone, my lighter color. I'm going from my lightest to my darkest here. A little darker mid-tone, my darkest, but not the as heavily as I would if it were on like the underside of the ribbon turning away from me. So in some areas I'm using that number nine, my darkest marker that I'm using on this ribbon, in some areas I'm choosing to let it taper out to a softer shadow. Focusing on how maybe it comes from something behind it, how shadows play on each other. Um, all my grays are a French gray, which means they're kind of warm, they have this tannish color in them. On the bottom, I'm only using the four, two, and one because I want this to be soft. It's mostly in light, but I do want it to have some shadow and some sculpting to it. But just noticing that as you're going through it, if you want to blend things, if things are looking choppy, take the lightest color you've got in the same range and go over it, and that can work really well as a blending marker and also unifying your kind of layers and syncing them together. Very similar to how we go over it with a you know lighter colored pencil or a brighter colored pencil it can help really mesh all of your brush strokes and kind of smooth everything out for you. So I do take, this is my colorless blender. I find I like colorless blenders more for wetting an area down before I go over it than for trying to blend after it's put down but it's one thing that you can use to um, really clean up some edges and get some perfection in there.